Warhammer 40,000 Rogue Trader is something of a first for me, the first complete game system I've done on my own. Warhammer Fantasy Battle, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay and Judge Dredd were all co-written to one degree or another. Believe it or not, Warhammer 40,000 is also the first game I wrote for Games Workshop. It always got put to one side while other projects were worked on. Now that it's finished and printed, this is also the first game with which I'm completely happy. Well, almost completely, we creative types. Warhammer 40,000 arrived at Citadel Miniatures five years ago when I did. The game, originally called Rogue Trader, was envisaged as one of a series of short freebie games which would be sent out to mail order customers. However, the first game in the series had to be a fantasy one, not science fantasy. Rogue Trader was shelved and Richard Halliwell was commissioned to write the game that eventually mutated into Warhammer Battle, which appeared in its first incantation as a boxed game of three booklets. Warhammer Battle's popularity established the format for future games. Rogue Trader had to be rethought from the ground up. The game was rewritten using the Warhammer rules, mechanisms and format. Even in the finished version of Warhammer 40,000, the game mechanics are solidly Warhammer. I regard this compatibility as essential, not only for the sake of the system, but also for the background mythos and general feel of the game. Work on Rogue Trader proceeded at a pace which can only be described as fitful. I put it to one side to do Judge Dredd and the Warhammer Battle second edition rules. Warhammer Battle 2 benefited from some of the development put into Rogue Trader. Many of the new ideas which had been earmarked for Trader were incorporated into it. By now, the dark and dangerous background for Warhammer had started to evolve, partly based on ideas from Brian Ansell and partly on the background for the Citadel Miniatures Rangers. The Chaos Warp Gate concept and the Slam were established, the awesome demon Aztec frogs acquiring a new cosmic aspect and although not revealed in its entirety in the fantasy game, this background is the root of the whole Warhammer mythos. With Warhammer Fantasy Battle out of the way, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay intervened. This was a good opportunity to use the background material already worked out for Warhammer Battle and Rogue Trader, giving an atmosphere consistent with the whole set of games. Thanks to the arrival of Jim Bambra, Graham Davis and Phil Gallagher, I was able to turn over the unfinished Warhammer Fantasy roleplay. At last, the chance to return to Rogue Trader. At this point, Rogue Trader existed only as a computer printout, and Games Workshop had shifted all development work onto new computers. Wizzo stuff to be sure, but faced with the prospect of typing Rogue Trader into another computer, I opted for another rewrite. Warhammer 40,000 has been written three times, but I think it is the better for it. Not something that I can say for the author. Since the first rewrite, the basis of Rogue Trader has been the Warhammer battle system. The high level of crossover between the different games made this fairly easy. But the crunch came with the change in emphasis away from hand-to-hand -hand combat toward fighting with ranged weapons. The Warhammer 1 to 1 ground scale meant reducing weapons ranges to levels which were hardly believable. The alternative was a tabletop the size of a football field or abstract and artificial scenery. If, for example, a weapon has a range of 300 yards represented by 30 inches on the table, the average model is 10 yards tall. In itself, this distortion doesn't matter, 
but buildings suddenly become hundreds of yards across and three tens of yards wide. This wouldn't have mattered if the scenic features were to be general areas of hilly, arboreal or urban terrain, but I have never liked this approach very much. I wanted a game where a model could sensibly hide inside a building, at the rim of a crater or behind a tree. In other words, the models and scenery had to represent the situation as was. The game works very well using the abstracted ranges. Even though ranges are very short in realistic terms, the differences between different weapons ensured that their vital qualities were no less distinct. In short, if it works, don't fix it. Eventually, however, I did come up with an advanced rule to facilitate a true ground scale and longer ranges. Having tried both systems, players invariably prefer the abstract one. The fixing of the rules is irrelevant when you play the game. Warhammer Battle is a game of formal units and formal manoeuvres. This of course wouldn't do for Warhammer 40,000, so I had to come up with a mechanism for moving the game down a level, from the tactical battle to the skirmish action. Rogue Trader was to be a game which several squads of five models or so confronted each other over shanty towns, in the wreckage of hive cities or in jungle clearings. Squads had to be united in their overall command, and had to be kept together in a general sort of way. On the other hand, I wasn't looking for a game with the regiments of shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder troops that characterise Warhammer Battle. A greater element of role-playing was also needed, making players take decisions on an individual basis rather than committing whole units to the fray. The solution was to give individual models a degree of autonomy within their units. Troops can move away from the rest of the squad, providing they stay within two inches of another trooper from the same units. Units can spread out, but have to maintain some sort of overall cohesion. This provided the basis for the skirmish game, but as I'm sure Warhammer players will realise, lead on to the which model is shooting at what problem, which simply doesn't exist when an entire regiment is letting rip at a target. These problems were ironed out during development. I decided to include advanced rules which suggested different ways in which fire nomination, randomised fire and targeting could be resolved. During playtesting we found that the best method depended on the size of the game being played. The final result of this approach was a set of rules with only a few sections that had to be used, and a lot of add-ons and options. The number of additional rules beyond the core system gives the Warhammer 40,000 Game Master much more freedom than in most tabletop games, and invites a high level of Game Master participation. In play, the mechanics work well. From the beginning, I adopted a template system for weapons with a spread of fire area weapons, such as missile launchers. This made fire resolution a bit cumbersome at first, as every time a model fired, it could result in several hits, all of which had to be resolved separately. In the end, it proved simpler to reduce the number of area weapons in use. Most troops now carry simple one hit, one casualty weapons. The area fire system attracts comments from players unused to it. I must admit that it goes against what I consider to be an important design principle. A game rule must not only reflect what happens, but the way in which it happens. The player takes an area template marker and places it over his target and then rolls to see if it scatters. Templates that miss are repositioned and then targets in the new area of effect are diced for. The firer's ballistic skill doesn't affect the deviation. This is in fact governed by the size of the template. 
weapons with larger effect templates deviate more often, but because the templates are larger, the deviation involved rarely takes them completely away from their aiming point. In practice, the system achieves exactly what I wanted. Area fire is not absolutely reliable and may result in a blast going slightly amiss. No matter how skilled the firer, area weapons remain slightly unpredictable. Thanks to the damage caused by weapons such as lasers and blasters, I needed to rethink the standard strength and damage system used in the Warhammer system. As Warhammer Battle players will know, the system uses a lot of damage chart which cross-references weapon's strength with target toughness to give a d6 score needed to cause one point of damage, a wound. With the new game, I wanted to allow more powerful weapons, but I also had to maintain game balance. Simply increasing a weapon's strength would destroy this balance. To make weapons more effective, therefore, I introduced an additional modifier to the target's saving throw. In Warhammer, this modifier is linked to strength, but in Warhammer 40,000, the link was broken. There are weapons which can cut through armor like a hot knife through butter, but then do relatively little damage. The laser, for example. At the same time, I introduced a variable damage roll, allowing some weapons to cause more than a single wound from a hit. This was necessary in the case of large weapons, where targets with large wound scores were likely to be engaged. All these modifications do make the shooting procedure more complicated than in Warhammer. I felt this was appropriate for a game involving fewer models and a greater variety of weapons. Whilst the Warhammer 40,000 mechanics are derived from Warhammer Battle, the new technology rules have to be wholly new. This was something I really enjoyed. In Judge Dredd, I had developed a system for vehicles which, thanks to a production error, became incomprehensible in its published form. Oh dear. However, using this as a basis, Warhammer 40,000 ended up with a slick system based on the Warhammer statistics profiles. I took a leaf out of Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay and used a critical hit chart to resolve damage on vehicles. The guts of this is a 2d6 roll which gives a nice bell curve with a good chance of a predictable result and enough luck to make it interesting. There were of course hundreds of bits to tweak and test. Amongst the most irritating for me were the random generation tables, involving hundreds of changes and inevitable rejigging of percentages. This was made necessary by the close link between the figure design process and the game. There was only so much modeling time available, so there was little point in having Space Marines armed with dozens of different weapons if the figure designers only had time to make a standard marine. The models influenced the rules and vice versa. Just why it is that when you're just about to finish a section, some person walks in with his latest cybernetic killer, clone armadilloid, lobotomized space nun and her amazing drone weeble dog and wants the rules for using it. By the time the game was ready for editing in December 1986, Games Workshop had decided to produce Rogue Trooper. The ensuing confusion was incredible, with people talking about Trader when they meant Trooper, and Trooper when they meant Trader. Gurgling quietly often became the only option. A new title was needed, and some bright spark, whom I shall hate for the rest of my life, came up with Warhammer 40,000. Because of the ensuing confusion over Warhammer Battle, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, and Warhammer 40,000, see the gurgling above, the full title is Warhammer 40,000 Rogue Trader, which neatly abbreviates to 
WH40K or OK in conversation. I prefer Warty Thou myself. The publication of Warhammer 40,000 opens up a whole new area for supplements, scenarios, modelling articles, and more of everything. The first supplement is already in preparation, and I'm looking forward to throwing myself into further game development. The Warhammer 40,000 universe was designed for gaming right from the start, and has plenty of room for future ideas. With over a million planets in the Imperium, there's room for players and other writers to develop virtually anything they want. Go forth and develop. By Rick Priestley. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, then please be sure to like and subscribe, or even leave a comment. I always try my best to reply to them all. You can even now support the channel by joining the Patreon page, details of which are in the description below. Thank you again for watching, and always remember to drill your barrels.